If playing a wizard game is more important to you than the trans community, don't act surprised when some people no longer want to engage with you. Not to mention the blatant anti-Semitism in the narrative, but go off. JK Rowling isn't going to F you. Well, clearly my dreams have been shattered. All kidding aside, this tweet I think kind of echoes a lot of sentiment a lot of people are feeling about Hogwarts Legacy and how it can be a bit problematic. I mean, this tweet did earn itself 2.3 million views, so well, it got people talking. Now, I'm not usually one to talk about this kind of stuff just because it's a minefield and I try to have fun with my videos, but I want to try to branch out and bring some new content to the channel and talk about this. A lot of people are feeling conflicted about this game and this franchise. But what I want to do with this video is talk about it in a respectful manner to all parties. Try to understand where the people who are against Hogwarts Legacy are coming from, but also try to understand the fans and where they're coming from about people who want to play this game. And all this kind of circles back to JK Rowling, the person who created the wizarding world of Harry Potter and all that kind of stuff where she's put her heels in the sand when it comes to the stance she wants to take on trans people which is her own thing I don't know why she needs to say this stuff if I was her I would just be a shadow in the background just collecting cash off of people who love the franchise now I'm not gonna go over all her tweets and everything she said just know she's anti-trans she's kind of that stance of women are women and men are men kind of stuff which I can understand if you enjoy the wizarding world of Harry Potter but don't like JK Rowling's stance on things well you can feel quite conflicted. But I feel like with this project of Hogwarts Legacy, it's something that's completely different. Like, yes, it takes part in the world that J.K. Rowling created, and she'll most likely receive some money off of like funding of like licensing of the name and the context and all that stuff. But the developers of this game, the studio did reveal that while the works of J.K. Rowling, more specifically the world and the lore, obviously has some role, Rowling had no direct part in the development of Hogwarts Legacy, nor its story. So she's not even involved with the project. It's literally just using like Harry Potter as like the theme to make it so that you can make a game off of it. If you buy Hogwarts Legacy or like Harry Potter, you're automatically a transphobe. That's like saying if you ever played a Blizzard game, you're automatically a fan of sexual harassment. And that's kind of a point I want to bring up with this video is that like every organization might have some bad apples in it or probably do. We've seen it a lot with Activision Blizzard right now with a lot of terrible things that have been going on within this company, but they're not the only company that have had similar issues. Apple together, which are actually a union made up of workers from all parts of the Apple organization, the Twitter said that they've received nearly 500 responses and hundreds of stories of racism, sexism, discrimination, retaliation, bullying, sexual, and other forms of harassment. So does that mean that if you buy an iPhone or use an iPhone that you're automatically a person who associates with those terrible people? Everyone's favorite organization, the Hey EA, posted about a thing talking about sexual assault within their communities of games that they post. Does that mean if you play any games that are published by EA, then you're automatically a person who's involved with sexual assault? Assault. Or if you're a fan of Halo, how about the comments that Frank O'Connor have said mostly on NeoGAF where he actually got banned from for saying kind of racist, sexist things. So that means if you're a fan of the Halo franchise, you should stop playing because that means you're supporting people like this? Personally, I would say no, mainly because of the content that they help create doesn't really push that narrative or you're not really like supporting stuff that's like anti this or anti that. Like for example, when I'm playing Halo, I have no impressions of them being anti-trans, anti-gay, anti-people, this or that, anti-rights of whoever is having issues right now at the moment because the game's about sci-fi adventures of fighting aliens. Do any games and content that Activision creates promote the sexual harassment that's happened within their organization? No. Of course not. That's kind of how I'm feeling right now about Hogwarts Legacy, where the people who have made the game, there's probably even trans people that have made the game itself and enjoy the franchise. There's plenty of trans people out there who enjoy the franchise, but you know, they just kind of separate JK Rowling from the content that's been created that she's not even involved with creating right now. Because the content of Hogwarts Legacy and Harry Potter franchise is that it provokes more teamwork, organization, coming together to work together for a greater cause. Within the movies, you even see Harry come across people who are sexist, who are effectively racist. You filthy little mob blood. And he rises above those issues to become a great unifier for the entire school of Hogwarts. And we don't really know what the story is going to be like within Hogwarts Legacy, if it's going to be something that's kind of similar to the movies or try a different type of beats, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be an anti-trans game. I recently posted on my community page on the channel here, guys. If you want to catch these, make sure you tap that subscribe button, but I was reaching out to you guys to see if you have any thoughts about Hogwarts Legacy and the controversy surrounding it. Well, you guys left a lot of comments, just around 150 comments, so you guys have opinions. I think Melody T. She over here said it best, saying, I'm trans and I couldn't care less for what JK says. I'm a Harry Potter fan and will definitely be giving this game a go. And that comment kind of just pushes my point even further, saying that the Wizarding World 
doesn't push like an anti-trans narrative. If anything, it puts a narrative of people coming together, overcoming their issues and differences for a greater cause of things. Which is so weird because JK Rowling, well, definitely isn't that. And please don't pirate Hogwarts Legacy either. You own a slave and kill Jewish caricatures. Like, this game is WTF on so many levels. Now that's a take on so many levels right there, but they're not the only person. Hogwarts Legacy has slavery, apologia, rhetoric in it. Where apparently thus they enjoy being the slaves and they wouldn't know what to do with freedom if they even had it. Which, out of context, yeah, sounds absolutely terrible. It feels like that kind of message right there doesn't really seem very fitting to the wizarding world. And maybe to the context of predated history between these two different factions that maybe they fought against each other, one side lost, they agree to this, maybe that's part of their culture. I don't know. We haven't played the game yet, so that's kind of a really unfair judgment to what Hogwarts Legacy has to offer. Now, when it comes to the anti-Semitic stuff, I'm sure that what they're referencing to are the goblins that run the banks within the wizarding world which, yeah, on that front, I can kind of see what you're talking about. And on his podcast, I think Jon Stewart kind of said it best. Have you ever seen a Harry Potter movie? And people are all like, I love the Harry Potter movies. Like, you ever see the scenes in Gringotts Bank? And they're like, I love the scenes in Gringotts Bank. He's like, do you know what those folks that run the bank are? And they're like, what? And they're like, Jews from, uh, it's the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. I just want to show you a caricature. And they're like, oh, look at that. That's from Harry Potter. And you're like, no, yeah. that's a caricature of a Jew from an anti-Semitic piece of literature, J.K. Rowling was like, can we get these guys to run our bank? And you're like, this is, it's its a wizarding world. It's a world where it's you like- You can imagine anything. The train station has a half a thing and no one can see it. And we can ride dragons and you've got a pet owl. And who, who runs should, the bank? Who should run the bank? Uh, Jews? <laughs> yeah, they look like Jews. What if the teeth were sharper? It was one of those things where I saw it on the screen and I was expecting the crowd to be like, holy shit, she did not, yeah. in a wizarding world, just throw Jews in there <laughs> to run the fucking underground bank. And everybody was just like, wizards. Dobby's <laughs> like, Dobby, Dobby doesn't have anything <laughs> oh against my Jews. Lord. Oh, Dobby wow, doesn't wow, wow. understand. The goblins within Harry Potter, I can definitely see people making that connection based off of the like old terrible propaganda against the Jewish culture, which is like obviously a terrible thing. And well, you can see like how there's that similarity in visual style. So I mean, I can also see like also in the fantasy side of things where they make people made that argument like, well, goblins are kind of greedy kind of creatures that will, you know, are a little seedy and stuff like that, which would make sense to kind of in a kind of more secretive type of bank situation. But based on what we know of terrible caricatures and also the general st visual style of goblins, it's like what John Stewart mentioned, you could have literally had anybody else, but then you chose goblins that kind of look this way. Though within the story and context of Harry Potter's universe of the Wizarding World, that they don't really do anything that's like terrible, they just run the banks. I will say, yeah, it's very problematic and I feel very conflicted about the whole thing. And I also feel like if you had these goblins do anything else in the world of Harry Potter, I don't think people would make this connection, but this is the world that we live in, people are going to make that connection. So for the people who enjoy the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and want to play Hogwarts Legacy, does that automatically make you a terrible person for wanting to play that content? I don't think so. Because like we've been talking throughout the entirety of this video, that the content that's there within the Wizarding World doesn't push these terrible narratives. And also most of the money that's being made off of this game are gonna be the publishers and developers and probably a little bit of the licensing going to JK Rowling, but she has nothing to do with the project like we talked about earlier. So it's not like when you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you're supporting these terrible things that people make these connections with beyond from what the content that's in that media. So I hope I'm getting my point across here. I think I am, but these topics are so difficult to talk about just because they're so nuanced. But I hope I showcase within this video that a lot of different organizations and companies have had their issues with bad employees doing terrible things. But does that make that company or that media a terrible thing? I don't think so. I'm able to differentiate the people who created things or the art from the artist kind of thing. It's kind of like those things with like Gina Carano, right? Where she said her terrible things online and basically just got cut out of Star Wars altogether. So does that mean since if you liked Star Wars or the content she was in, does that mean you support her terrible views? 
I don't think so. I think Star Wars is a rather inclusive story. Obviously, if there's terrible messaging within the media, it needs to be called out. Well, the reason why all this stuff gets created is because people want to make a lot of money off of it, and you make more money on making more inclusive, friendly stories that people just like to have. People like to see the good guy win, see the bad guy lose, and things like that, because it's a much more enticing story that has a bit of a good message to have what you walk away and go like, you know what? Yeah, I want to try to be a better person in a way. And hopefully that's the feeling that we get after playing Hogwarts Legacy. 